Thank you, uh, Liz, for that introduction. So, um, as mentioned, I'm a midwife and I qualified nine years ago. In that time, I've practiced in all areas of midwifery and my most recent clinical role was as practice development midwife um, in South East London. So lead for CPD and training of the multidisciplinary team around obstetric emergencies and um, tying in with QI and learning from incidents. Um, and I was also introduced to kind of GERFT work um, in that role as well. So this kind of kickstarted my professional journey in sustainability. Um, I already had a personal interest prior to that, um, but the impact areas can have on individuals and the impact that that then puts on the NHS as a potential consequence was really the kind of grasp my interest in sustaining the workforce, sustaining the NHS wow. and uh, sustaining healthcare whilst providing quality care as well and tying that in um, as well uh, to my personal interest in kind of climate change and how that um, all intervenes and in, into weeds. So I then discovered SUSQI from Centre for Sustainable Health um, via my unit's governance lead. At the time, um, she really encouraged me to pursue this area of interest. And then one thing led to another. And one day I applied for the fellowship with Greener NHS, thinking I have nothing to lose. And that's basically how I got here. So on the Greener front, those who are new to the work want to start by giving an overview of what ha is happening in the NHS. And this is specifically um, referring to NHS England rather than UK as a whole. So... Many of you may be aware, a few of you may be new to sustainability and wanting to um, pursue this avenue more within your professional. Uh, um, around 4% of England's emissions uh, arise from the NHS. So we're both part of the problem as well as the solution. And we need to tackle climate change at its source in order to deliver our core purpose as a health service to improve the health and care now and for future generations. So in October 2020, the NHS became the first in uh, health service in the world to commit to reaching net zero emissions, as outlined in the Delivering a Net Zero publication, with two targets to be net zero by 2040 um, by the for emissions that we um, directly control. So on this first slide here in the white box, we've got the NHS carbon footprint, which is scopes one, two and part of scope three. And then to be net zero um, by 2045 for emissions that the NHS has influence on. So the additional um, scope three and elements of scope four as well. So what's known as the carbon footprint plus. So yeah, so last year the net zero ambition was then embedded into legislation. The Health and Care Act 2022 now places a duty on NHS organisations to consider climate change in their operations, making the NHS the first healthcare system um, to do this as well. So when I started this fellowship, I was asked to identify opportunities within maternity, specifically as a midwife, and from desktop reviews, existing projects uh, that I'd come across, and considering priorities across um, the Chief Nursing Office, Maternity Services and Greener, I developed um, a driver diagram of potential but not exhaustive areas and um, not necessarily all feasible, but kind of this driver diagram um, arose from what my ideal would look like. So as someone who's only recently been in clinical setting as well and knowing how pressured the care settings already are, I've been very adamant with every conversation that I've had that any changes or interventions shouldn't add to any clinicians already very full workload. And where possible, we should be aiming to make changes kind of behind the scenes or to improve the work settings without uh, compromising the quality of care. So as you can see here, um, there were four key areas um, that I um, looked to focus on. Um, Entonox, which I'm not going to go into too much because I know Mark um, is going to be uh, discussing that um, after me. Um, reducing waste, um, quality improvement and public health care that we provide. And then I really wanted to make sure that any of my ideas kind of aligned to the work streams within Greener NHS. And the um, 
maternity and midwifery pri priorities and programs. And this was devised at the beginning of my fellowship. So appreciate the um, additional things such as the three year plan um, for maternity and neonatal services have since been published as well. So one of the examples then kind of did a bit more of a deep dive with reducing waste. So there's a lot of focus on waste and it seems that um, whilst there is a outpouring of interest throughout the workforce about um, supporting the greener NHS agenda, so many um, conversations that we have is uh, around even service users who just want to see more recycling and better waste management and reducing uh, plastic. So yes, that is important, but thinking back to the pie chart of the carbon footprint, the waste stream is um, a significantly small proportion, um, less than 10% of the carbon footprint of the NHS. So in order to address that, we then need to consider actually why is it becoming, why is, how is it, why and how is it getting into the waste stream? So we need to reduce what is even entering the waste stream. And in order to do that, there's elements of procurement, um, sustainable equipment, whether it's reusable uh, products that can either be potentially single patient rather than single use, um, reusable tourniquets, which um, have been introduced. So like the fabric ones, but actually um, a plastic. So rather than the, um, so the more durable than the single use ones as well, but um, comply with, infection uh, control guidance. Um, products that are single use but contain less plastic um, or considering products that are reusable and can be sterilized between uses as, as well. So with the reduction of use, things such as the gloves off campaign, which proved hugely successful at Great Ormond Street um, and tied in very nicely with SUSQI focus. Um, tangible sustainability for um, staff as well. So increasing the awareness, engagement and education. And um, so the trust itself that has fallen out of my head, but um, some trusts as part of their green plans have incorporated mandatory training. So the um, Green Healthcare module that's available on eLearning for Health, and um, they have set that as mandatory and had um, over 80% compliance with that on their last review. Um, again, avoiding repetition unnecessary procedures and um, that can reduce the amount of um, products and items that are even utilised entering the um, waste stream as well as for giving a focus on the personalised care and impact on travel and transport and um, that any repetitions may uh, result um, so has an element of getting it right first time. Um, there is various projects around recycling, especially a fantastic one that Alice introduced me to about recycling products on Labour Ward um, and a really useful way of actually getting clinicians um, involved in sustainability and opening up their eyes to wider considerations as well. And going all the way down to prescribing. So medicines um, comprises a significant part of the carbon footprint. So um, giving things bolus rather than um, through an IV giving set where it is safe to do so. Again, reducing the single use plastics and making sure that um, any prescriptions are appropriate so that either not over prescribing medications uh, just because it's easier to do so and appropriate medications to so stepping down to um, PO from IV in a timely manner as well. So again, it all ties in with that personalised care. Mm -hmm. So Taking into consideration um, one of the projects, uh, one of the programmes of work within maternity in NHS Link England is Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle. So again, this ties in with the public health element of the driver diagram as well. The CO screening throughout pregnancy is something that um, is familiar with us and it is already part of um, the work that we do. But this ties into the more sustainable and prevention element um, of the sustainability in women's health. So if we are able to successfully um, support a woman or birthing person in smoking cessation, then that is potentially going to um, reduce the risks of the pregnancy complications and labour complications 
uh, for her maternity journey. But then similarly, it has a longer effect on the health of that newborn who, once they're born, they are then part of, on the receiving end of um, NHS care. So for example, we, we know that um, children that are in a smoking um, household are more likely to smoke. Um, that can contribute to asthma um, in later life. And as down here from um, London, that nearly a quarter of children with um, asthma live in a household where um, there is a smoker. So again, the implications that getting it right during pregnancy, supporting that smoking cessation, it doesn't just um, improve the outcome of the pregnancy, um, but it has the potential to then improve the woman's health for the rest of her life and the child's health, um, considering the work that has been done already around um, asthma and um, inhaler work as well. So there is a significant element in the public health role of midwifery, maternity services, obstetrics, the we're already actively doing, but it's raising that awareness of the large impact um, it can have with sustainability. And then another um, element that I quite often get, get asked is, I'm just one person, what difference can I make? So one thing that um, Nick Watts always, the Chief Sustainability Officer always says when he speaks is, is he's interested in the changes that you can make tomorrow the sustainable choices you can make at 9 a.m tomorrow and you can repeat that the day after and the day after and the day after that so within my role within the chief nursing office obviously um we're looking at embedding sustainability for nurses and midwives as specific um, workforce groups and as of march this year these are the numbers if each of those individual practitioners each day made one sustainable choice perhaps risk assessed appropriately that gloves aren't necessary for this particular procedure. That is a phenomenal amount of changes that could be made on a daily basis. Um, networks such as this, um, the image up above, it's a fantastic start to gain inspiration, gain connections, find out what is going on. And then just the um, circle on the left within um, the Chief Nursing Office, our sustainability team are currently developing a framework around sustainability and how we can help embed that into the practice of every nurse and midwife throughout their career. And these are the four domains that we're wanting to focus our work on of the population health, um, uh, decarbonising care, advocating for sustainability for our service users and for our people, our staff, and supporting innovation as well. Um, so there is a lot going on. Um, it really is an exciting time. Um, so if for any other information around sustainability that's happening with Greener NHS, then these are just our contact details as well.